Okay, officially, this is our second day on Law of Cosines, uh, and I want to start off with a just simple Law of Cosines question. Law of Cosines is really good for when you have all the sides and none of the angles. I hope you get why Law of Sines would fail completely, because it has sine of the angle in a whole bunch of places in the formula. So, why does it work? To use law of cosines, it has the cosine of an angle in the formula. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C is equal to C squared because we know everything else. We know this and this and this and this and that. The only thing we don't know is the one angle. That's why we can solve for it. Then the only other like twist here is if I asked you to find the angle, well, you got to know which one you want to find. And I had labeled them here with colors. One's green, one's red, one's black. And then I told the kids, find the smallest one. And they knew that that would be the side across from the, sm the angle across from the smallest side. So we're finding that red angle right now. Now, as soon as I know I'm finding that red angle, I hope you know that that forces it to be called C. Because the only place I have to put an angle is C, so we need this to be called C, which makes this little c. And then the A and the B, because they're just right next to each other, and it doesn't really matter which one you do as A and which one you do as B, you know, you can switch them around. So I don't care if you called this A and this B or vice versa, but I'm going to do it that way. But the A and B don't matter. You can reverse them. So then I'd have 6 squared plus, the way I'm using it is b is 8, so the 8 squared, minus 2 times 6 times 8 times cosine of big C equals little c squared, which is 5 squared. Now, I feel a little bit like 1, 2, skip a few, 100. Uh, I'm going to skip a whole bunch of steps here because I don't want to have to do all of that because I know you guys got it down. To cosine of c is equal to some decimal. Okay, that was us multiplying all this out and this out and then subtracting and dividing and I got a final answer of cosine of c is equal to and again give me the decimal not the angle what'd you get is it some is it point something or anybody verify 781 all right and again I know it might go further than that and that all is a rounding thing and I'm not going to get overstressed about that so then I'm going to do inverse cosine of 0.781 Gives us an angle of, what did you get? Can anybody verify? 38.6 degrees. Okay, awesome. Now, I want to remind you, just because this is about law of cosines doesn't mean that you have to not use law of sines. Because now that I have this 38.6, if they asked me for more info for any other thing, any other angle, I'd use the law of sines because it's just easier. And then once I have two angles, let's say I figure out with the law of sines that this one, which has to be bigger, let's say it comes out to like 40. Let's say that's like 40. Well, again, I don't need to use the law of sines. I can use my brain. That plus that plus that has to add up to 180. So you can use all kinds of different things. It doesn't have to just be the law of cosines. Okay, questions? Yes. So this is like the law of cosines for any angle and the law of Yes. As soon as you have an angle and a side across from it, Jump over to using law of sines. Yes, on any problem, anywhere. Okay, all right. So, if I were you, uh, things I'd learn from this would be, first of all, can this make a triangle? We talked about that. How do you tell if you can make a triangle? If the biggest side has to be kind of like the hypotenuse, then the other two sides have to add up to more than that. Okay, so let me give you an, a ridiculous example. 1 comma 1 comma 9. Is that going to make a triangle? No, because the other two sides can't possibly add up to more than 9. If you draw it out, here's my 9, here's my 1, here's my 1. They can't meet. It's not going to work. Okay, how about 8 and 1 and 9? Could that be a possible triangle? I got my 9 side here, and if my 8 side was here and my 1 side was there, they'd have to be completely straight to be able to make it be, and then there wouldn't be any room inside. It wouldn't be a triangle, okay? Even as 
obscure as 8 and 1.1 1 .1 and 9. That could be a triangle. Incredibly tiny, squished triangles, almost no area inside it, but... All right, and that brought up another topic, area inside it. So let's go back to our triangle that we had in the first place, this guy. There's a formula for the area inside a not right triangle. And granted, you could do all the work to figure out what the height of this thing is. You know what I mean? Like what that height is. It would be a pain in the butt. But then you could do base times height and divide by 2. That's true for any triangle. But it works way easier when they're right triangles, of course. Because when you have it like this, and this is 8, and this is 2, you can go, oh, the area is 16, divided by 2 is 8. There is 8. See what I'm saying? That's super simple. But what is the super simple formula for this? Does anybody have it memorized yet? The area of a not right triangle. Well, I'll give you a hint. It starts off with a one-half times, because the other formula started off with that, too. Anybody have it memorized? Usually there's a couple people. Yes? You got it. You said it right. One-half A, B, sine of C. Okay. Now, for this one, this is not a picky formula in that I don't care which of these we call C. Now, I happen to have labeled it with that bottom right-hand corner being C, but unlike law of cosines, which is very picky about which one is C, this one doesn't care. Let me prove it to you this way. 6, 7, that uh, looks more like the longest side over here, so I'm going to go with 6, 7, 8, like that. Okay? Could you figure out this angle right here. Yeah, with what? Log cosines. Okay, so if that's the log cosines, I'm going to solve that for me. I get an angle, and let's say it comes out to 40. I'm not saying that's exactly right, but let's say it did. Then, if I wanted to do apply that little formula I just told you, see if you have a short-term memory. One half what? A, B, sine, C. Should really use a small a for that. Okay. Then which one can be C? Anything you want. So which one would you pick to be C? So if we have to do sine of C, wouldn't it make sense to use one the one we have? You know what I mean? So if that if I had that corner, I could use it, but I don't have that corner. I have this corner. And I could do one half A B sine of 40. And that brings up the point, what are A and B then? They have to be 6 and 8. Because if this one's C, the other two have to be A and B. The other way to think of it is, this is one of those side angle sandwiches again. Where I've got this and the angle, SAS. I have side angle side. Whenever you have a side and an angle on the side, then you can use this formula. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. That wasn't 40. That's not really 40. But you can figure it out with law of cosines. Then, once you know what angle it is, I want you to figure out the area of the triangle that has sides 6, 7, and 8. This would be a very good ACT question. Because it can be done the long way. Because, see, ACT doesn't expect kids to have law of cosines memorized. But if you do, if you've got that, you, they can't stop you from using it, right? So you could absolutely do this problem without law of cosines. It would just be really slow. And that's one of the things they do on the ACT, is they give you a problem that if you know a shortcut, awesome, you save yourself a ton of time, but you could have dropped a perpendicular, you could have done this stuff to make it into right triangles, and then you could figure out the angles that way. But instead... You are smart enough to know the law of cosine. So use it to figure out how much area this triangle would have. Maybe they would even, as an ACT question, made it into a word problem and said, you know, this guy is making a garden in his backyard, and he's got boards of length 6 and 7 and 8 feet. If he puts them together into a triangle, how many square feet will he have to garden in? And you'd 
a lot of kids would not get this question right because it would be really hard to do without the law of cosines. All right, I'm going to pause for a second while you try that one. Okay, I'm going to get started on this one. Uh, and I want to skip a bunch of stuff because it save us a ton of time. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of big C is equal to C squared. I'm just going to establish that that would have to be C, and therefore that's little C. I could use this as A and this as B or vice versa, but C had to be 7. I would have to say equal 7 squared, 49 at the end of the problem. And then, when you're all done and you solve for C, what did you guys get for the air angle there on that problem? What did you get, sir? 57 point what? Did anybody else get 57.9? All right, good. So then, if that's 57.9, now we can use this formula, 1 half AB sine C. 1 half AB sine C, 1 half. And again, do A and B matter? Well, kind of they do now because C has to be the angle we have. So therefore, this has to be A and this has to be B. You can reverse them, but A and B have to be 6 and 8. So 1 half times 6 times 8 or 8 times 6 wouldn't matter. Sine of 57.9 is equal to, and let's check dice of destiny to see who I'm going to call on here. Row two, person three, that's you. Okay, I'm going to work you through it then because that's my policy. I don't want people to uh, skip out on stuff. So would you please type in sine of 57.9? I'll do this part in my head for you. That's 3 times 8. 8 times 3 is 24. And then you're going to do 24 times that. Can anybody verify 20.3-ish? All right. And that would be how much area you have to garden in. What kind of units would that have then? Square inches, square meters, whatever this was in. I think I said feet before, so I'll say feet squared. All right, or square feet. Do you get how that could be handy if you had like a bag of fertilizer you had to buy and it said it would cover 15 square feet and you're like well how many square feet do I have and you look it up and you I mean you figure it out and you go I have 20 square feet oh bag isn't big enough so all right so there's area of any right non right triangle so you're pretty darn close to knowing everything that you need to know and yet the test isn't till next week so why well because it, these are word problems and they're hard and we have bearings still Okay, so I want to do one more uh, word problem in class here to practice, and then I'll assign you a few to work on. Um, the homework for today did not include this problem, uh, but I'm gonna tell you if you're in this, if you're in the file from yesterday, and you're in the neighborhood of the homework from yesterday, this was the one problem I didn't assign at the end. If you want it on your screen, cool, there it is. Find your homework. Find the one problem I didn't assign the one after the clock. I did assign the clock. So I encourage you to, I did, didn't I? I think I assigned this problem, didn't I? Okay, all right. So anyway, the one right after that is this. Now, I'm gonna put you in groups and have you figure this one out. And I'm gonna also encourage you to get your homework brushed up. Uh, even though uh, you will not have enough time to just do your homework, if you already did it, you might have time to clean it up because we're gonna grade the homework from yesterday in a minute. All right, so right now, we do, please. Get in groups like this. These two rows slide next to each other. These two rows slide next to each other. These two rows slide next to each other. I'll give you the option in the back. Do you want to work with those two or do you want to have your own partner right here? All right, have your own partner. Come on over. So look at last night's and do this problem. What I'm going to do is just simply add this to last night's homework. It's just that you're doing it right now. Okay? Go ahead. I trust you. Okay, just a clarifying point on this question. And I could see goofing up some kids. I'll see if you got goofed up. Uh, so here's the camp, obviously. I mean, they have the little tents. You should have been able to figure out that's the camp, right? Okay, so if that's the camp, then they say it is four miles to the northernmost point of the crater. Well, can you tell by looking whether that's north or or that's north. Can you tell just by looking at the picture? You can't really tell. Okay. Now, just so you know, the answer won't be any different, whether you picked this being north 
or this being north. It will not matter. Okay? But out of curiosity, how many of you made the assumption that up on the picture is therefore north, and you went with that as the north? Mm. And the reason it's so small is because, why? Because they say that it's four miles to the northernmost point, and this looks further, right? And so I think a lot of people said, if that's going to be four miles, we'll say that's the northernmost point, and then that's the southernmost point. Okay, well, I don't care which you pick, because again, it won't matter. If we say that's four miles this way and two miles to the southernmost point, if the angle between the two lines of sight, this is a line of sight, and that's a line of sight, the angle between the two lines of sight is 117. Okay, so if I had just given you a triangle and said this is 2, this is 4, and this is 117, and then said how long is the black line, I hope that would have been pretty easy, and it's just a law of cosines question. But you just have to like put all these pieces together because you got a word problem, and it's not easy to figure out all that. But that's really what it boiled down to. Okay? How many of you feel like you have that other side now? You're comfortable. You probably did this thing right. Okay. What do you guys think the answer is? 5.2? All right. Raise your hand if you had 5.2. Okay, good. Somebody must have checked the key by now. Is it 5.2? Okay, cool. All right. So, I now I want to pause for a second, and I'm looking at the time and figuring out what is more important here. I think what's most important right this second is to tell you what your homework is since we're on that, you know, we're in that neighborhood of your new homework for the next thing. Then I think I might spend the next few minutes grading the top 20s with you so you can see those scores before that gets too old while it's still sort of fresh in your mind. All right, so the next thing is right here, Dave, A2 law of cosines. All right, we're going to do 11. And have you caught on to this whole A and alpha thing. Okay, remember it was little a, little b, and little c are the sides, but the angles can be Greek letters. And alpha is like capital A, and beta would be like capital B, and uh, what was that other letter? Gamma, I think. The one that looked like that weird, like R-like thing. The gamma is the big capital C. All right, so do you get that something in this triangle, we drew a triangle for you to try to make your life a little bit better. One of these angles looks like it's like 63. First of all, that looks like 45. That can't be possibly it. Okay. What do you guys think? Which of these two seems like it's 63 to you? The top one or the one on the right? Doesn't this one sort of look like a 45 degree angle-ish? Maybe a little bit more? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I feel like the top one's most likely to be 63. I wouldn't have argued with you if you said the other one was 63. It would have been fine. Okay, let's make that one 63. That makes this alpha, which makes this side across from it what? Little a, which is what? 18, okay? And then B is 20. Well, I know where A or alpha is. These guys are the A, alpha side. B, beta is 20. Well, I'm just going to look at the picture and see what makes more sense. If this one's 18, do you think this one's 20? No, that doesn't make sense. Probably this one's 20 because it looks like it's about the same size or similar size to the other one. Okay, so then there, that's lined up as best we can. I guess it's a lot better to put the 20 here than it is to put the 20 there, right? Can you at least agree with that much? Okay, so again, I know some of you are going to argue that these two sides are up. It won't matter, uh, but it'll, it'll matter more if you put the 20 here. That would be a problem. All right, so now what are we supposed to figure out? Solve for the remaining sides and angles. So again, this is one of the reasons they say drawings not to scale, because it really doesn't matter. If you figure out that these two were reversed, still the other angle that's like this, it's either here or it's here if you think that we made a mistake there. That angle can be figured out. And once I have that angle, this angle becomes a no-brainer because it comes from 180 minus the other two. And then this third side. And then I'm not going to, uh, I don't want you to have to do a whole separate assignment on finding the areas of these things. So I'm going to cut your assignment down, but I'm going to ask you to find the area of these triangles also. So don't just find the remaining sides and angles. Put and area. And what's that formula again? One half 
a b sine c. One half a b sine c. Okay. And if I were doing this, I would do it on the original angle that they gave me here and use that as my sine of 63. And a and b would have to be this one and that one. You'll have to figure out what that side is. You can do it with any of the corners, though, if you want. Let's say later you figure out that this one ends up being, you know, uh, 50 degrees or something. Then you can do it with this side and this side and that angle. Or, if you want to, you could do it with this angle and say it's 20 and 18 and whatever that angle comes out to be. As long as you're using a side angle sandwich, you can do the area with any of those. All right. So I'd like you to try 11 and 13 where you're finding all the other sides and angles and the area. Then I'd like you to do one more bearing question. We are going to have bearing on your next test. So you got to get, you know, stay decent at bearing. And then uh, this naturalist question, I think I'm going to save that for in class tomorrow. So I'm going to cut your assignment down to not and have to include that. So we're going to do this international airport tour plus these two. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to stop the video for now. And if I do more, I'm just going to pause it. And if I do more at the end of the hour, cool. Otherwise, this might be the end of the video.